Hi, my name is Dr. Virginia Von Schaefer. I'd like to answer and discuss a question that I often get asked, uh, sometimes by um, colleagues, but uh, also with, uh, by many patients. And it has to do with my choice of testing. Uh, I'd like to use the RGCC, you know, research, research group in uh, Greece uh, that has developed uh, an extensive test for uh, cancer uh, treatment and as a guide and also assessment of the heterogeneity of any individual's cancer cell population. It's called the Oncomics Plus test. Now, there are many tests that do uh, give us information about uh, mutations in cancer. Uh, the Foundation One test is, is one of those. And um, <clears throat> although it does give information about mutations, it, and it may refer to some treatments, many times no treatments are really recommended unless there are possible ongoing trials. And the percent of cells that may bear these mutations is not identified or quantified. In RGCC, the test is basically taking uh, the circulating tumor cells and stem cells that may be uh, in your blood at the time of the blood draw for the test. And then three different techniques are used to isolate these circulating tumor cells and stem cells. So there's a good possibility that if there are stem cells and circulating tumor cells, they will be counted and uh, a number will be given to us. Now, what does that number mean? It's only a relative risk assessment of the potential for metastases to develop. I do this test on many people who we know have stage four cancer, so we're aware that there are cancers, other uh, tumors outside of the site of the original cancer. Uh, and so it's a kind of a moot point, but nonetheless, we tested the number and they count the cells. Then the work begins, <clears throat> excuse me, to put these cells that are not dividing rapidly in a culture medium that will cause them to grow so that many cells can be uh, obtained and fill hundreds of petri dishes with the patient's own cell material. This is very important because then elements or treatments or drugs, whatever we're gonna be testing can be put in that dish one at a time and assess the percent killing that is achieved with that element against the person's own cancer cells. As a result, we can develop a personalized cancer treatment plan that involves only the most efficacious elements that we have seen from the results of the test. This is very important because many times when I see patients who've had treatments time and again previously for a cancer and or even ongoing, uh, say, for example, in the case of a HER2 positive breast cancer or maybe a PDL positive lung cancer, we test and the circulating tumor cells and stem cells are not susceptible to those drugs. So many times people are assigned a very long one and a half year treatment plan uh, with a drug that may or may not still be efficacious. So it's very important to get this specific information, and sometimes it does have to be repeated as well. But not only do we get this sort of death in the dish type of result, we also can get a lot of information about mutations of normal regulatory functions that um, dictate the life and death of a cell and uh, proliferation ratios or rates. So these mutations are basically aberrations of natural mechanisms of regulatory uh, cell function. Now, okay, that's fine. In Foundation One, they have those mutations listed. However, in this test, via microRNA, they will test and give you an approximate percentage of the cell population overall that was isolated, what percent bears that mutation. Well, this is a very useful because Yes, I've done a lot of research to find things that can treat these mutations, either stop the abnormal activity or kill the cell that bear it. 
but we need to know the clinical significance of that. So if somebody has a mutation that's a 5%er or a 10%er, well, maybe that's worth treating. Maybe it's better to treat something that is a 30 to 45 or 55% mutation population. So this is very useful information, and it doesn't all need to be used at once. So these are things that can be staged, and you can create a synergistic treatment plan depending on what the results of the tests are. There's also a battery of tests that are done on quote-unquote natural agents that achieve cytotoxicity or immune modulation or inhibit uh, growth factors. So these are also very, very useful because sometimes we can use them adjunctively to uh, the actual uh, cancer-treating drugs if they're indicated. Overall, I think it's a very, very useful test, and there's a lot of information that can be used not only at one point in time in a patient's treatment, but create a, a span or a sequence of treatments uh, depending on uh, the intensity of the program and whether or not a patient needs a home plan or they're just going to um, <clears throat> or they're going to have to manage their cancer problem acutely. Uh, it's really set apart in that it's cost effective and the company uses multiple methods of isolating circulating tumor cells and stem cells so that uh, we get a better uh, chunk of the population, as it were, to test on. Thank you for listening, and I hope this will little interest you in terms of testing that you might want to get in the future. Thank you.